Hi, my name is Jim Reed, and I'm one of the Rockware programmers. Today I'll be presenting some information about a new feature that we've added within Rockworks 2020 called the Playlist. Now first, I wanted to start with some friendly reminders. If you could turn off your microphone if you're not speaking. If you have questions, please type them into the GoToMeeting chat box, and we'll try to handle them during or at the end of the presentation. Use the horizontal splitter between the presentation and the little Hollywood Squares boxes at the top of the screen to maximize the content screen because some of the menus will be hard to read if the presentation portion is too small. And finally, if possible, please turn on your cameras so that we can get some nonverbal feedback. Now the purpose of the playlist is based on some questions and complaints that we've had over the years about Rockworks. The first one being, why can't Rockworks just make a simple program that does everything that I need to get my job done? Well, that was kind of an impossible thing for us because we serve a bunch of different markets and we just can't make a single focus product. So that's one of the things that the playlist is designed to address. The next is that we hear a lot is, I only use Rockworks a few times each year and it seems that I have to relearn it each time. Well, that's, uh, that's a big deal for the playlist and, and we'll, I'll show you how we, we've tackled that. Every quarter I get new data for the same project and it's a hassle to find and run the same suite of programs every time. That's very common within the environmental industry and so again we've tried to address that with the playlist. Next is, People who say I'm the only person in my company that knows how to use Rockworks, so everybody dumps their data on me. Well, we're going to show you how you can make turnkey tools that you can give to those people so that they can process their own data. Infrequently, but nevertheless it's real, is that we probably won't be going to court until five years from now. How will I know how to what I did five years ago. Well, if you're like me, I can't remember what I had for breakfast, much less what I did when I was processing some data five years ago. So for litigation support, this is a pretty big deal. And then finally, you know, people who work at Rockware, who test the software, it's, it seems like every time that the programmers fix one bug, they break two things that used to work. That's just the nature of a big, complex program like this. So retesting it every time a change is made is painful, to say the least. So this allows us to basically put a bunch of stuff into a big script and then make sure that everything still works. So today's focus, though, is going to be primarily on the, the, the idea of making mul or automating multiple steps and automating the processing uh, for projects in which the data is changing on an ongoing basis. So let's start with some demonstrations showing how you would automate some tasks that are based on the data sheet. I'll start by loading a sample data sheet with some geochemical data. Then I'll create a scattergram with a linear regression plotting gold versus silver. Now here's where things get interesting. Notice the playlist button that now appears in almost every Rockworks application menu. If you press this button, you will be prompted for the title that will be used when adding it to the playlist. I'll enter gold versus silver. Now, if we look at the playlist, you'll see an item titled gold versus silver. Let's go back to the scattergram program and plot silver versus lead. We'll add this operation to the playlist using the title silver versus lead. The playlist now has two items. If we click on the continue button, the program will create two diagrams. We can now save this playlist, forget about it for a few years, and pull it back up to reprocess the data. If we want to inspect or change these options, we only need to double click on an item and the menu that was used will be displayed. Next, I'll append the contents of a tutorial file that is included within your samples folder titled Playlist Datasheet Ops 1 Files. And I'll process it. How does it work? Well, to answer that question, we can click on the View Playlist as Text option. For every item within the current playlist, we store every single menu setting. 
For those of you who suffered through our now depreciated RCL or Rockworks command language, this should look kind of familiar. Personally, I hope to never look at another RCL file again. I'll let the playlist do that. Now, let's add some borehole related programs to the playlist. I'll select the Stratigraphy Layered Model Program, click the Add to Playlist button, and give it a title for the playlist. To test it out, note that I don't need to reprocess the entire list of commands. Instead, I can uncheck the other programs and click the Process button, which will only process the checked playlist items. Next, I'll append another existing sample playlist titled Playlist Borehole Ops to my current playlist. I'll check all of the items in the playlist and select the Process button. The program will now process all of the items in the list. After a bit, we'll now have a gold versus silver linear regression, a silver versus lead linear regression, a Piper diagram, a total dissolved solids contour map, a Durov diagram, a map of stiff diagrams, a pie chart map, an interpolated 3D stratigraphic model, a borehole location map with interpolated surface contours, an interpolated lithology profile, an interpolated stratigraphic cross section, an interpolated gamma profile, and an index map showing the section locations. You may notice that some of the output tabs are untitled. To change this, double click on the associated program within the playlist and click on the output options. To accommodate the playlist intent, we've added output and export options to all of the menus to allow for total automation. Let's look at a real case study example, but first allow me to provide some background. If we click on the Help Case Studies button, we'll be transferred to the Case Studies section of the Rockware website. I'll click on the Geophysical Case Studies and select the first project involving an electromagnetic survey. In this example, a retired sea captain without any geophysical or computer experience sent us an Excel spreadsheet containing soil conductivity measurements from an area in New Jersey thought to be the unmarked burial sites for nine Continental Army soldiers killed during the American Revolution in 1776. A playlist was created in which the data was analyzed and interpolated such that the captain could add new data and reprocess it without any knowledge of the Rockworks program other than knowing how to paste data into the data sheet and the location of the process button. Here's how it works. The file with the EM measurements is loaded into the data sheet. Color-coded conductivity maps are generated. Histograms of the conductivity maps are created. The EM data is interpolated into grid models. The grid models are filtered and statistically manipulated, and anomalies are depicted as inferred graves. Our largest playlist was generated for a dioxane plume that has been continuously sampled for the last 36 years. This playlist contains over 227 commands to process numerous subsites and requires about 48 hours to process. We've used this study as a template to create a simplified hypothetical TCE case study dataset and playlist that is included within the Rockworks tutorial files. Step-by-step -step instructions are provided within a white paper titled Automating Time-Based Modeling, Analysis and Visualization of Contaminant Migration. Unlike the dioxane study, the TCE playlist only takes about 15 minutes to complete. The basic idea is that a lithology model is created and used to create a Boolean permeable or impermeable model, which is then used to constrain interpolated quarterly hydrochemical models. These models are then used to create 3D and 2D animations showing the plume migration over time. Finally, the changes in inferred contaminated material volumetrics over time are summarized in a final report. This last example involves our tutorial cold data set with 583 boreholes and analytical data for three seams. The goal is to determine where the overburden, interburden, coal thickness, BTU, sulfur, and ash 
are all acceptable based on this list over here on the right of cutoff parameters. For those of you who have ever done something like this by hand, you know it's going to take a very long time. I'm thinking like six months to a year. Even with menu-driven software, it still involves a lot of steps. The Cole Evaluation Tutorial Playlist automates the process in 62 steps that take 11 minutes to process. We start out by loading the data sheet, then we interpolate a ground surface model, we interpolate thickness models, interpolate analytical models for each seam and analytical parameter, we then use the surface and thickness models to create a stratigraphic model, we create a stratigraphic fence diagram, we generate histograms for all of the models, we then filter all the models based on the cutoff levels into Boolean models. We then multiply these Boolean models to see where they all agree. We then filter this model to isolate just the larger contiguous targets. We then convert this grid and the stratigraphy model to a block model. We then create an optimized excavation plan and a volumetric report. We then create a 49-page MS Word file with maps and the volumetric report. Now, just to drive home a point, let's say that after creating the final report, it was discovered that this borehole had the wrong coordinates. In the old days, viable options included quitting your job, suicide, pretending that everything is fine, etc. With the playlist, it means clicking on the process button and finding something else to do for the next 11 minutes. Obviously, I'm kind of biased about this, but I think it's the most important thing that we've done. It's the rockworks that I've always wanted. Now, within the program, just to reiterate, there's four different uh, sample playlists that you can have a look at. There's the borehole ops one in the samples folder and the data sheet playlist also in the samples folder. And then we have separate folders with sort of full project scenarios for the one called TCE site and for the one that I just showed, the coal evaluation sheet. Now, just so you know, these are some of the applications that we're planning to create sample playlists for. If there's something that you'd like us to expedite, please send us an email to support at rockware.com. And thanks for watching.